Hi everyone, it's Friday the 13th and the first week of the David Bain retrial is behind us. What a case this is. Five lives lost, of course. A guilty verdict quashed by the Privy Council and a new trial with formidable prosecution and defence teams. The prosecution case, perhaps unsurprisingly, has so far been pretty similar to the first trial. But the defence case seems quite different, a much more concerted attack on claimed deficiencies in the way police gathered evidence. We asked prominent barrister Marie Dyberg to assess the first week. It's been a great start to a very a long anticipated trial. The Crown and the Defence have both made it very clear where they're coming from and the Defence, by the questions they've asked and the way that they have uh, challenged a lot of the what we call seen normally objective witnesses, we know that they are going to be saying you cannot safely rely on what evidence is left. Now the scene is most important in any trial. You start off with the scene the jury is then able to see the framework, can make what they want of the evidence, the items, how items were found at the scene. That is their job. But if you can cast some doubt in the beginning on how it was gathered, how it was preserved, how it was recorded, and challenge that fundamental basis for the evidence by the Crown in the case it has to prove, that's a good start. We have an example of this. This is Michael Reed cross-examining one of the police officers about evidence, in fact, blood on Robin Bain's hands. We have blood on the heel of the thumb, no photograph taken, no sample tested. You understand that? Do you want to disagree? No, no, I'm not. That went to the grave with Robin Bain. What point are they making there exactly? Right? Well, I think the point that's been made in, by the defence, but also in fairness to the Crown, is that that evidence is now lost. It could discredit the Crown case, it could support the that, Crown that's case. That's the interesting thing, isn't it? That the evidence may have gone either way. We will never know that. That, that is exactly it, um, because both sides are going to be disadvantaged by loss of memory, lack of examination. DNA not being available. But Michael Reid wants the jury to believe that the defence is going to be more disadvantaged, doesn't he? Well, I think really the Crown has got to prove its case beyond reasonable doubt. And if you cannot discredit or at least cast some huge doubt over the evidence, then of course a defence is going to be disadvantaged. That chance is lost to him to properly challenge what the Crown case is all about. So Michael Reed's pushing it pretty hard. In fact, he's pushing it so hard that he got a bit of a ticking off from the judge. Let's have a look at this. I would like to make the next two or three questions first before telling this but witness... there's an objection what... to the question you've just... <coughs> I know that... <laughs> oh, I give up. You make the ruling, I'll abide by it, sir. If that's how it's going to go, I'll do it. The, the ruling is simply as I've indicated, that the questions must be put fairly... And they must... Two questions here. Firstly, Michael Reed's pushing it hard, and the judge has to intervene if he goes too far, doesn't that he? That is right. The, once the horse is bolted, the judge can't bring it back, no, and it would be point. terrible to start it again. It's a very mild ticking off by, by a judge who's highly regarded by both defence and prosecution. And at times you do have to be brought into line. All of us do. And it's the judge's role to make sure that nothing goes wrong. And as he said, is that you cannot ask questions that will confuse or misrepresent what you're doing. Whether or not this happened in this case, I think the judge was just being cautious and preempting something that might go astray. But what Michael Reed is doing again is saying to the jury, hey, we don't have some of the evidence we ought to have, and actually the management of the scene wasn't very good either. That yes. point is, is one he's going to keep coming back to throughout yeah. the trial, I guess. Yes. And that is loud and clear, and that's a very, very valid line of questioning and challenge for them to be doing this week. The preservation of a crime scene is so basically fundamental that from that uh, various opinions, various theories are going to be drawn. If you cannot rely on it, if the integrity is compromised, then where do you go from there? Marie Zyberg, thank you very much indeed thank for joining you, John. us.